Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This has been a while and it's so good to be back. So I hope you're doing very, very well today. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Ashley Jade, I upload on here. I also upload daily on TikTok and I have a vlogging channel too. So please do check those out. But today's video, I'm going to be testing out the brand new Revolution X Clueless line. I was so excited when they announced this and they finally released it. I managed to get early access on it and it arrived yesterday so I had to get a video in, had to show you guys this palette. So without further ado, let's just get straight on with today's video. I'm really excited for this one. I hope you guys are too. Do not forget to smash that thumbs up button for me. Leave me a lovely little comment in that comment section down below and also do not forget to press that subscribe button because it helps us out so, so much and let's just get straight on with today's video. So as I said, I was so excited as soon as they announced this collection of mine released it. So they released a bunch of different items for this collection. I think they've got about four palettes, some eyeliner pencils, a few makeup bags. Like they have brought it all out this time and it looks so, so good. They also brought out false nails to go with the collection, which look amazing. So today we're gonna start off by me showing you the palette, doing a few swatches, just having a look at the palette in general. Then we're gonna move on to do an eye look and then finish off with a review. So I hope you do all enjoy this. So this is what the palette looks like that I bought. So I bought the As If palette. Like I said, there were four palettes in total, three minutes and then a forever flawless one this is one that i had to get if you know me you'll know my obsession with forever flawless palettes like it's just become a collection at this point so we've got a nice full-size mirror in there and then when we open it up this is what it looks like look at how beautiful this color story is soon as i saw this i knew i had to have it and i've been kind of looking over the last day kind of thinking what I looked where I want to do because there's so many pretty colours in this palette. I'm tempted to go on the more pastel side because I've not done a pastel look in a while. But at the same time, these purples and purpley pinks look so pretty, I kind of want to use them. So I'm kind of torn if I'm honest. I might do a pastel look with like a dark wing maybe. Okay, we're going to get on with it anyway. I'm going to insert some swatches here for you guys to see. These swatches are absolutely beautiful. I love the actual combination with the mattes in there, the different variation in shades. And I just cannot wait to put it on my eyes. So I just want to show you guys the box that this came in because this is literally so cool. Like this is the packaging. And I thought it looked so cool, literally so iconic. I'm literally so obsessed. And then the actual palette comes as like a cassette, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna start off with, I'll be completely honest, I do not have the brushes that I would normally have. So I'm currently at my boyfriend's house, not in my studio. So normally I bring my little makeup bag with everything in it. I packed it, got it all ready, put it by the door. Got a text from my mum saying that I forgot it. So I had to go to Superdrug, buy some new bits, replace some bits that needed replacing anyway. And we're having to kind of wing it. We don't have all the makeup brushes I would normally have. So you guys are now all zoomed in and ready to go. I'm going to start off by doing my primer. Usually I use the P. Louise primer or the Beauty Bay Eye Base. But right now we don't have those. So we're just winging it with the e.l.f. concealer. This is a really, really good concealer. So I thought it'd probably be a really good primer too. So I'm just taking a flat morph brush to blend all this in with. It's not too bad for blending, it's quite a nice consistency, so it blends quite well. So I'm just going to keep blending this out till I'm happy with it. When I'm blending my eye primer, something that I've learnt personally, which I've not actually started doing until like the last like six months probably, is to pat and not always blend. So if you like sit and like blend really really hard at it, the product is just going to end up going everywhere, you're not going to have a nice smooth coverage, but if I just kind of pat it in, it seems to do such a better job at just blending in, having a nice layer of coverage and just going really well. So now that my eyes are all prepped and primed, we are all ready. You guys are all zoomed in. We're going to go in with the first colour. So I've just grabbed this brush here. This is just a super drug brush. I just really like it for applying product. And then down here, we're going to take the shade which is called LA Traffic. It's the most stunning kind of... I know you don't get royal purples, like you get royal blues. But I feel like if you did, this is what it would look like. So I'm just going to tap into that. And then I'm going to start applying this on the outer corner of my eye. We're going in with a dark shade first, which is kind of scary. But I feel like I would just kind of map out where the look's going. One of the things that I've always loved about Forever Flawless palettes is the mirrors. I've got such a good size mirror in like such a good place. You can literally just look down into your mirror all the time. It's so handy. Do you know what? That'd be such a cute liner shade as well. This honestly feels like the most chaotic video already. My camera literally just cut off because I ran out of space on my card, which I never even thought to check. Like, I haven't done this whole YouTube thing in a while, so I wasn't really 
looking at how much space I had, I just kind of started filming. So this is what it's looking like. This is the most beautiful colour. I admit it looks very blocky, very messy right now, but trust the process, we will blend it out later on. So next we're going to go in with a lighter purple. So I'm going to take the shade Betty from the palette, which is this beautiful like, lilac-y kind of shade. It's so stunning. So I'm just going to take some of that and more pack it onto my brush. And then we're going to pack it onto my lid next to the other shade there. It will take quite a bit of applying because it's so light compared to the dark, but we'll just blend them in nicely. Oh, that is absolutely unreal. That's such a pretty shade. I feel like it would have been nice if I had a transition shade in between the two, but I'm so here for this. Like, look at how beautiful that is. That's literally so pretty. I also apologise about the lighting. It's very overexposed right now, but if I don't have it overexposed, you literally can't see anything at all. So I'm just going in with that LA colour again and just tapping over the edges of where we applied the light purple. And I'm going to do the same thing with the light purple, tap over the edges of the dark, and keep doing that until we've got a nice blend between the two. That's actually starting to blend already. That is honestly so pretty. Like the shadows are so easy to work with, they're literally blending like a dream. They're very, very pigmented as well. Okay, this is how it's looking. I'm kind of feeling, do I go in with like the light pink maybe? Or the light, there's this corally shade that I could go in with, it's a really light kind of like coral compared to this light pink, like they're very, very different kind of tones. Okay, we're gonna go in with this coral. I really like that. We're gonna go in with that coral shade, I think. It's a bit different, a little bit out of my comfort zone of what I'd normally do. And that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm trying to go out of that comfort zone and just try new things and different color combinations and things like that. But that is so pretty. It's like a really subtle, corally orange. And it's a really pretty shade. I'm so happy. I really like that. Okay, so what I'm going to start doing now is start doing some blending because it looks a little bit messy at the moment. I'm going to take this brush here, which is actually a near brush, and it's the 202 Angled Eyeshadow Brush. Like I said, I don't have many options when it comes to blending brushes and just brushes on my eyes at the moment. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to take the shade As If, which is this really, really light one. It's kind of like a pastel pink, but it's almost a white. It's that light. So I'm going to take that to help with the blending. So I'm just going to tap into this and then run that along the edges really, really lightly. I'm actually so obsessed with how well it's blending. And then for the purple, I'm going in with that light purple Betty, just for the edges of the dark purple to blend out. Oh, it is actually unreal, is this palette. It's so pretty. It's really starting to blend out quite nicely now. I'm really enjoying the shade in there. The actual darkness of that purple going into the light. Okay, I'm going in with that dark purple again, just trying to build up that intensity before I then continue to blend that out. So this is what I wanted. I wanted kind of like the lilac-y, kind of pastel-y aspect, but then I also wanted something that gave a bit more of a pop of colour too. So I thought we definitely got a good combination going with these colours here. And then going to go in the shade as if and just blend that out of these two shades. That's that like really light one. And blend it up there. I was thinking of doing a cut crease, but now I'm just not too sure. I think what I'll do is I'll go off camera, finish the other eye, and then decide if we want to do one or not because I really do like this most of the time it is quite boring as it is but then I don't want to ruin stuff by doing a cut crease when it's such a kind of light pasta look in the inner corner anyway okay I'm going to jump off camera for two minutes do this eye come back and then we're going to decide what we do next so now it's looking a little bit messy around the edges so I'm going to do the more realistic part of this makeup kind of routine you want to call it and I've grabbed some of my concealer Grabbed some onto my brush, and then we're gonna very gently just tidy up the edges. So I'm literally just grabbing that concealer brush and then following my lower lash line up. There, and that's literally all it's done. It just neatens it up. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Start where my lower lash is and then follow it up. It helps me get a nice even line. I do like to use eyeshadow shields from Amazon sometimes. These help with this, but I find it's easy to just go for it and then 
clean up your mess afterwards. I'm going to have to redo my concealer probably anyway, but that can be a later problem. And then I'm just going to blend that in with the beauty blender. And from there, it looks like I need to get a little bit more dark on the left eye, but the right one's doing quite well so far. So this is now how it's looking and what we're going to do next is a bit of a cut crease so i was a little bit unsure as to if i was going to do one or not so it is kind of a low cut eye look down in my inner corner but we're going to do it anyway we're going to see how it goes and then fix it if we need to so i'm just going in and starting to remove the product from my lid there Okay, and then we're going to go straight down. It's not going to be anything too extravagant. So up to about two thirds, three quarters of my eye and then bringing it straight down. And then the exact same thing on my other eye. I feel like one cut crease always goes so much better than the other one. But it's so hard to change to fix it, but I feel like if you remove the product first, it's just an absolute game changer. Okay, this is how it's looking. Again, I know it looks crazy, but trust the process. So I'm going to grab some cotton pad, and I'm just going to go in with this and start to remove... The makeup that we just carved. So like everything on my lid there is going to go. And then same thing on this side. Just going to make sure that you get all the product from underneath. Because if not I'll end up getting oily and breaking through your shadow or whatever you put on top of it. So we're going to go in next. Now that it's all done and cleaned up. I actually quite like that so far. Kind of nervous, kind of excited. So what I'm going to do next is grab my concealer again. This is the e.l.f. one. This had so much usage during this video. And I've just applied some onto the back of my hand there. And then I'm going to take my Morph flat brush. Honestly, these flat makeup brushes are so underrated. When I first got into like, using flat makeup brushes, I was like, this is like so pointless. I could have had so many other brushes in my bag apart from all these. Now I use them, I just cannot get enough of them. I always use them to apply my cut carver, my cut crease, my eyeshadow base, like all sorts of things. They're just so good. So what I'm going to do now is probably not breathe for the next like 30 seconds. I'm just going to really gently start to outline where we remove that product. Which is again when a brush like this does come in handy because it's a lot easier to be able to stamp the product in. Okay. So I would normally go for a lighter shade for this colour underneath, but I don't have any of my P. Louise's. So literally I'm just use my concealer. That is actually looking alright for a cut crease. That's looking okay. I'm going to leave that for a minute. I'm just going to tap on these edges really gently. Okay, we're going to leave that for a minute. I'm going to do the other side. Again, making the other side match is just near to impossible. I'm just going to start where I can visibly see that line. And then bring it up. I feel like I just haven't really done a lot on YouTube recently. Like, I think I released two videos last month and I haven't released one this month. But I was finally kind of getting back on it and doing a good job with, like, filming and stuff. And then my holiday hit. So I already had a video filmed. I was going to edit and upload it. And then it turned out that my last piece of footage for the video deleted itself. So now I've got to go through and re-record the ending for it. But I'm not going to be able to re-record the ending with, like... How it was because before I got my hair done and now I'm a bit more tan so I'm just gonna go redo the ending like I'm so sorry the ending has gone so we're refilming it and that's all I'm gonna have to do because I don't think there's anything else I can do for that video okay so this is how it's looking not sure how even this is yet I feel like it could need a little bit more shaping on this to make it a bit more even that's a problem I'll end up doing a bit higher on one side a bit lower on the other a bit higher on that, a bit higher on that, and it ends up just getting 
to be my whole lid that's covered. So I'm going in with that morph brush again, the fluffy one, and I'm going to go in with the shade LA Traffic, which is that dark purple. I'm just going to stamp this into my corner. This is where I'm hoping the look will start to come together. Stamping it into my corner and then starting to blend it into those edges. And I'm going to go in with that Betty shade to help blend that out with. Lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to grab the Betty and apply that on my lid. Where that purple is ending. Just to help give it a nice little gradient. And then I was going to use the pink glitter. But now I'm kind of feeling maybe using the white. Because this is the pink. It's quite pretty but it's more of a pinky purple. But then that's the white. Like the white is unreal. Okay we're going to go with the white and see how that works. Okay, okay, I'm glad we went this way. That's quite pretty. If I'm completely honest about this palette, like I love Revolution, I love Forever Four, those parts I always have done. But I felt the shimmers just aren't as shimmery in this one. They're really nice, like the formula is so cream in the swatch really well. It's just, I don't think of that, like they're as shimmery. If that makes sense. So this is how it's looking so far. And I am getting pretty obsessed. The only problem is that Coralie shade we've kind of lost. The Beep Beep. Which is that one. So I'm going to go over that shade again. And just try to bring some of that colour back into the looks. It is so beautiful. It's just a very... I don't know. It's a very blendable one. So it just kind of gets lost in your eye look. And just blends into your eye look. I'm just going to start to blend that. And bring that back in a little bit there. And then I'm going to start to do the same thing on my other eye. We're going to go in with that glitter. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and blended out there. We're going to go in with that glitter. And then start to blend that through with a dark purple and a dark pink. So we're going to go in with that dark purple first, which is the LA Traffic shade. This is something I used to always struggle with, was adding colour. So I was corner once I'd already applied my cut crease because... I could never blend them, like at all, like the blend just would not want to work. But now I feel like I've got it. Like sometimes obviously it doesn't work, but now I feel like I've got it a lot more than I did. So I really, really am in love with these shades, I'm not going to lie, I really, really am in love with them. I think ones that I really, really want to try, I really want to try this bright green shimmer that looks so beautiful this yellow i was so close trying in this look but i decided not to and then i really want to try like this rose gold because that looks so pretty like i'm so excited to try that so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to finish up with this eye apply a bit of that betty shade on there to help blend with and then we're going to go in with that white shimmer again i'm not gonna lie i've seen clueless but i haven't seen clueless in like 10 years so i'm definitely gonna have to watch it again after doing this look and after playing with this palette because half the stuff in here that i look at and be like what on earth is that about and then watch it in the film i'm like oh my god how could i have been so stupid like and just it'll all come back to me but yeah i haven't watched clueless in a very very long time i'd love if they did like a freaky friday range or keep doing more like ariel and like disney princess ones and stuff like that like i'm so into those kind of ranges i think they're really cool um, so I'm just blending this, the beep, beep shade, into there. That's how it's looking. I'm kind of here for that. I kind of really like that. So I'm just finishing off my eyes using this mascara. This is the Long Lasting Curl Mascara by Emmy Wear. And I actually bought this yesterday, so I'm not sure what I think of it yet. I do quite like it so far. I think I quite like it for my lower lashes more than my top lashes. But yeah, it's quite nice. It's really affordable as well. I've been trying to try like new drugstore makeup and try for like affordable things. I'm going to be doing some more dupes videos and some more affordable makeup videos too. So I've just taken those shades from top of my lid and just mimicked them on my lower lash line. And honestly, it is beautiful. This is not the kind of look I normally go for. It's a little bit different. Pigmentation is so, so good. The colour story is everything. The one thing I have noticed though is it doesn't have any imprints on any of the matte shades. And usually in Forever Flawless palettes, they do have the imprints. So that is one thing I have noticed. Not necessarily a negative thing, not necessarily a positive thing, it's just an observation. But yeah, I'm so obsessed with this. I just think they've really executed this collaboration so, so well. There's been a lot of makeup brands doing collaborations with like TV programs, films, 
other companies and they just kind of seem like pointless collaborations and they didn't seem to actually be anything about you know that tv show or that film but this one I feel like I've absolutely nailed it. I'm so obsessed. I absolutely love the palette. Like, I feel like it's got everything. It's got the packaging. It's got the detail. It's got the shade names. It's got absolutely everything. I'm so obsessed with it. So, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have, you know what to do. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button for me. Leave me a lovely little comment down below. And make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. And I really hope to see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.